Book of Genesis, chapter 19. God rescues Lot. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of, of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and bowed himself with his face to the earth, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they laid down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door after him, and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you, and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, Stand back, and they said, This fellow came to sojourn, and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then they pressed hard against the man, Lot, and drew near to break the door down. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house, both small and great, so that they wore themselves out groping for the door. Then the men said to Lot, have you anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city? Bring them out of the place, for we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against its people has become great before the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law, who were to marry his daughters, Up, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be jesting. As morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. And as they brought them out, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, O oh no, my lords, behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills, lest the disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, the city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there, is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. He said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. God destroys Sodom. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife behind him looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord, and he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the valley. And he looked, and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. So it was that, when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of his midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. Lot and his daughters. Now Lot went up out of Zoar and lived in the hills with his, with his two daughters, for he was afraid to live in Zoar. So he lived in a cave with his two daughters, and the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve offspring from our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she arose. The next day the firstborn said to the younger, 
Behold, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve offspring from our father. So they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. Their firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites to this day. So I'm just going to run through my notes real quick here uh, just to kind of, you know, figure out my thoughts here. So the angels that were with God when the Lord had met Abraham, well, had appeared to Abraham, uh, also appeared to Lot at Sodom, right? Uh, this is in verse 1. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening. So, immediately we see the connection between Lot and Abraham, as I believe they are brothers. I can't fully remember. Alright, I can't find it right now, but I believe Lot was the brother of Sarah. Yeah, I, hmm. either way, Lot and Abram are in some way related, right? So, w through that connection, both men have seen the angels of the Lord. Lot hasn't seen the Lord in specific, but he has seen the two angels that were with the Lord when the Lord had met with Abram. Well, Abraham. In verse 2 and 3, we see Lot's hospitality towards the angels in, the, in a similar way to how we saw Abraham's hospitality to, hospitality to the Lord and the angels in the previous chapter. And perhaps it's because of that hospitality and also because of the connection with Abraham that Lot was spared from the city during the destruction of Sodom. In verse 4 and 5, we see all of these wicked men gather around Lot's house so that they can do stuff to the angels, right? They want to, as is put here, know the angels and it is because of that wickedness that has been displayed by every man in Sodom it says but before they lay down the men of the city the men of Sodom both young and old all the people to the last man surrounded the house because in the previous chapter in chapter 18 Abraham intercedes for Sodom. He wants to, he gets into the, this little debate with the Lord where he starts to ask what if any righteous people are found there? Would the Lord wipe them away with the wicked? And the Lord said that if he were to find anyone who is righteous, he would not destroy Sodom. But here we can see that no one in Sodom is righteous. They're all wicked. They're all wicked men who 
are trying to defile angels. Verse 7 and 8. Here we see Lot try and appeal to the good nature of man. He, he is trying to get the men of the city to see that they don't need to be so wicked. They don't need to act in this way towards the angels of the Lord. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door after him, and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. And then he begins to bargain with these men by offering up his two daughters. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. So here we see that Lot is trying to, well, he's trying his best to defuse the situation, even at the cost of his own daughters. Because he knows that the angels are angels of the Lord, and he doesn't want anything bad to happen to them. He doesn't want to let wicked men have their way with angels of the Lord. So he would rather give up his daughters to these wicked men rather than let the angels have to suffer. And in verse 9, But they said, Stand back. And they said, This fellow came to sojourn, and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So we see that after being... After having their righteousness appealed to by Lot, and then after being bargained with by Lot, they begin to despise Lot. They begin to want to hurt him. They want to be wicked towards Lot because he has become this figure of judgment towards them. Even though he was only a mere traveler or a settler in the city of Sodom. So they've started to despise Lot's presence due to this. Verse 9 and 10, but they, wait, verse 10 and 11, but the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door, and they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house. So, here we see that the angels are protecting Lot in the same way that he has tried to protect them. And they have cursed the wicked with blindness so that they can wear themselves out. And so that they can be protected too. So that the angels can, be protect, can protect themselves and Lot and his family with no... With none of, you know, like Lot having to give up his two daughters or any of that. Because the angels are very capable. They are angels from heaven. They have more power than we as humans can even imagine. So, obviously they're well able to protect themselves. And that's what they do here. Verse 12. The angels command Lot to save those who are his family. So, the angels are trying to, well, they command Lot to go out and get his sons, any daughters, any sons-in-laws, any sons-in-law. You know, like, just gathering the people that belong to him in a way, right? And we see that this is an act of mercy, like they are trying to spare some lives in this city that are belonging to this righteous man. They are trying to give, fa give a favor to Lot in this way.
Verse 16, But he lingered, so the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him. We see the Lord being merciful to Lot. We see the Lord being merciful to his family. We see that though the Lord is about to destroy the city for how wicked it is, he also is merciful to the righteous that is there. And that fulfills his promise to Abraham when he told Abraham if he were to find anyone righteous, he would not destroy them. He would not wash them away with the wicked. And he did find someone righteous. He found Lot. And he will protect Lot. He will show his mercy to Lot. Verse 24. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. This is a sign of God's wrath. This is the power that God has. The Lord had protected Lot and then destroyed Sodom. The Lord is good, but against the wicked, he will not spare. He will not spare the wicked. And yeah, that's all my notes there. Uh, I just want to very quickly say that the little post-notes theory that I had yesterday about the Lord and the two angels being like the like the Holy Trinity, uh, that, that was just wrong. It says here that there's two angels, not, you know, like, yeah, like, you, you get me, right? It's not like... It corrected me. The Bible corrected me. It corrected that theory. And it's not a correct theory. So, yeah. So, yeah. That's everything I have to say today. Keep running when no one else is. Have a blessed day.